16 and Away from Home by Arletta Richardson. Chapter 12, Hearts and Arrows. February 12th, 1890. We've no idea how much longer we'll have to put up with Clarice, but even one more day will seem like forever. Letty doesn't say much, but she has fire in her eye. Clarice was on time for breakfast the next morning. If we thought she would be chastened after the previous evening's experience, we were due for a disappointment. We started out for school together, but we were barely out of sight of the house before Clarice turned on me angrily. I suppose you think I should be grateful to you for not telling Letty I was out last night, she stormed. Well, you don't have to feel so self-righteous. I don't care whether you tell her or not. She isn't in charge of me. Why didn't you tell her yourself then? Sarah Jane spoke up. And there's nothing self-righteous about Mabel. She covered for you because she has a good heart. Clarice sniffed and stalked off down the road ahead of us. I, for one, was ready to let her go. Oh, I wish I knew what I had done to her, I said. At first I thought she was just making fun of me because I came from the country, but now I think she really hates me. I'm beginning to think you're right, Sarah Jane agreed. It's more than just a nasty disposition. At noon, we tried to dismiss the problem from our minds as we talked with Molly. Letty said we could have some friends over Friday night for a Valentine's party, I told her. Whom shall we ask? Well, there will be the three of us. And Warren, Russ, and Thomas. Let's ask Matilda and she can bring a friend. That's eight. Who else? Clarice will probably still be there, Sarah Jane reminded us. She'll have to invite someone, too. I suppose it'll be that horrid Victor Linden. We pondered this silently for a moment. What can we do about it? I said. You can't tell a house guest to stay in her room because you don't want her at your party. You could invite someone for her, Molly suggested. Ask whomever you want to be her partner. After all, it's your party. This seemed like an excellent idea, so after much discussion, we settled on Melvin Wells as the extra boy. It's not as though we were pairing off in couples exactly, Sarah Jane pointed out. Matilda and Molly are the only ones who will have to be called for. The other boys can come together. We almost succeeded in forgetting about Clarice and our excitement over planning games and inviting the others. What do you want for refreshments Friday evening? Letty asked us at supper time. And how many will be here? Clarice looked up from her plate, and I blushed to realize that we hadn't even spoken to her about the party. There will be ten, Letty, I answered. Then I told Clarice who was coming. How nice of you to invite someone for me, she said sarcastically. At least I won't embarrass you with my choice of friends. I'm sure I wouldn't be included either if I weren't already here. This was true, and neither of us had an answer. Jacob ended the awkward silence with an offer we were happy to accept. Maybe you would like to have a sleigh ride to start the evening out, he said. Weather's just about perfect for it. We attempted to draw Clarice into preparations for the party. We're going to cut out five hearts, Sarah Jane explained. We'll cut each one in two with a jagged line. The boys will pick half a heart and the girls the other half. The one whose half matches yours will be your partner for the evening. Do you want to help us make them, Clarice? She grudgingly consented to assist us, so Sarah Jane drew them, I cut them out, and Clarice divided them. They were placed in separate boxes to be drawn later. What game shall we play when we get back? I asked. Do you know some, Clarice? Games are pretty childish, but I might be able to think of something that wouldn't bore everyone, she replied. I'll be in charge of them if you want me to. That scares me silly. Sarah Jane confided as we got ready for bed. Who knows what she'll come up with? Certainly she knows that there are some things Christians won't do, I said. It's a step in the right direction just to have her showing interest. But I couldn't help feeling a bit apprehensive, and I prayed that the Lord would keep Clarice from ruining our party. On Valentine's Day, she seemed almost cheerful. I didn't consider that a good omen. She's up to something. Sarah Jane said darkly after Clarice smiled at her on the way down to breakfast. Remembering the glares we had endured all week, it seemed highly probable. 
What can she do besides suggest games no one wants to play? I said. The sleigh ride and eating will take up most of the evening anyway. And who knows, maybe her folks will get home today and she won't even stay for the party. You are a dreamer, Sarah Jane said. She'd never miss a chance to be the center of attention. So, even though I had thought of it, we weren't prepared for Clarice's announcement at noon. My parents are home, she said, so I won't be going back to your house after school. They've already gotten my things. I'm sure you're not going to miss me, are you? Before I could speak, she continued. I'll still come to the party since you so graciously invited me. I asked Russ if he'd come and get me. I didn't think you'd mind. She could have punched me in the stomach and the effect would have been no different. For once, even Sarah Jane was speechless. I sat through my afternoon classes, but not much information entered my head. Molly walked home with us after school. There's no point in asking what you're going to do, Mabel, she said. You'll just turn the other cheek and give her your coat. How could she do that? I don't own Russ, I said. He's free to go with anyone he wants to. Oh, stop being so reasonable, Sarah Jane snapped. Russ hasn't asked another girl out all school year. You know he'd rather be with you. He could have said so, Molly put in. He didn't have to bring her just because she asked him. He's too much of a gentleman to just say no, I said. After all, we hadn't made any other arrangements than just everyone coming. Maybe I'll get the other half of his heart. It was dark by 6.30. Jacob had the sleigh ready, piled with hay and heavy carriage blankets. The pair of horses stamped the ground and the bells on their harness sang out in the cold air. It had begun to snow softly. All the ingredients for a perfect party, Letty said as we waited for the others to arrive. You'll have a lovely time tonight. Do you have your hearts all ready to hand out? I nodded. Everything did look perfect, but I wasn't really happy. I resented Clarice asking my boyfriend, though I hadn't thought of him that way before, to escort her. My only hope lay in the boxes of paper hearts. Everyone is here except Russ and Clarice, Sarah Jane announced. Let's go ahead and draw our hearts. They can get theirs when they arrive. When the matching was complete, I sighed with relief. Mine didn't fit anyone's, and neither did Warren's. That meant that Clarice and Russ would have the two left over. She wouldn't have a complete victory anyway. We were all settled in the sleigh when they arrived. Are you all ready to go? Clarice said brightly. Since everyone has a partner, I'll just keep the one I have. That will be fine, won't it, Russ? Can you help me up into the sleigh? Russ lifted her in and climbed up himself. He looked at me with a puzzled expression, but I turned away. If that was the kind of girl he wanted, let him have her. I suppose the ride was great fun. Everyone sang and laughed and talked happily. It all whirled around in my head, but I was conscious of only one thing. I despised Clarice Owens. By the time we returned home, we could only play one game before Letty had the food ready. Sandwiches, hot chocolate, and valentine tarts were on the big table. Jacob had polished apples and popped corn. We filled our plates and chose places to sit with our partners. The food looked delicious, but I wasn't hungry. Warren ate steadily and talked about the party. This has sure been a lot of fun, he said. We need something like this every month. I kept quiet. Say, Mabel, Warren continued, are you put out with Russ about something? Now, why would you think that? Oh, I don't know, Warren answered. He just wondered why you sent word with Clarice that he was to bring her to the party instead of you. I sent what? I yelped. He said I did that? Well, she said you did. Is something wrong, Mabel? I jumped up to corner Clarice, but she saw me coming and quickly turned her back. In the process, her cup of chocolate poured down the front of my skirt. Oh, how awful, Clarice said. But you were right in the way, Mabel. The look on her face was more than I could take, and I faced her furiously, ready to give her the full benefit of my wrath. In the sudden silence, I realized that everyone was listening, and I swallowed my angry words. Excuse me, I'll go and change my skirt. As I ran up the stairs, I could hear Clarice's laughter and the voices of the others as the party continued. 
I took off my skirt and sat down on the end of my bed. I have never been so furious in my whole life, I thought. I wanted to scream, but I knew that wouldn't do with all those people in the house. Instead, I clamped my teeth into the poster of the bed. When I calmed down, I went back to the party. Sarah Jane and Molly looked at me anxiously, but there was no opportunity to talk. After everyone had left, we helped Letty pick up the front room and dining room and then went up to bed. Mabel, how in the world did you keep from hitting that horrid girl? I would have flattened her. I almost did, I replied. But she was a guest here. You can't go knocking your guests around. I turned to the mirror to brush my hair. Mabel, Sarah Jane's voice sounded odd. What happened to this bed? I bit it. You bit it? You actually bit the bed? Sarah Jane collapsed on the end of it and shrieked with laughter. As mad as I was, I had to join her. Well, I couldn't very well bite Clarice, could I? I said when she had subsided. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to find out what's the matter with that girl if it's the last thing I do. End of chapter 12